Hello, and welcome back to another video where I show you some of the cool stuff you can do with Nix. Uh, last time I showed you how to use Nix as a homebrew replacement. Uh, you shouldn't need to watch that video before this one, but it might help make things make a little more sense if you're totally unfamiliar with that. So, a situation I find myself in fairly often is I'll be pair programming on someone else's machine, and I'll try to run some tool that I use on my machine all the time, but they don't have. And then I have to decide, do I want to install that tool on their machine and then pollute their environment with it? Or do I try to figure out some other way to solve my problem? Um, so the, this tool is a kind of solution for that. So let's say I'm in the dev repository as I often find myself being. And I'm on someone else's machine, and I just saw an error pop up, and I want to figure out what the source of that error was. So let's say um, the error was like, failed to start. And I want to find that with rip grep. So I'll run it, and it fails, because rip grep isn't installed on this person's machine. So uh, I could do nixenv-i capital A nix packages dot rip grep. And that would install it. But that would take, I mean, that already takes a few seconds to type. And it would pollute the, the other person's environment with rip grep, which maybe they don't want. So one way you can solve this is rather than actually installing it, stick a comma in front of this command, and it'll just download and run rip grep. So what? Um, in this case, it, uh, it looks for any Nix package that would provide the binary RG and then transparently fetches it and runs it, just as if it was installed, without actually polluting your environment. So if I do Nix and Q installed, you'll see rip grep is not here, but it ran. So what uh, this is a kind of interesting pattern, and I won't try too hard to explain how it actually works, except to say that when you actually install software in Nix, uh, with Nixenv in particular, it gets linked into Nix profile slash bin. But if you actually look at what those things are, they're just links to, well, in this case, Nix. But <laughs> this rabbit hole goes fairly deep. If you chase this down, you get to this. And then if I look at that, this is this, and then this is, it keeps going. But at the end of the day, these all end up in the Nix store. Every software that you run with Nix runs out of the Nix store, but nothing really like looks through the Nix store. It's all activated through profiles that link into it or activate it with environment variables. So to put software in the Nix store isn't really installing it rip grep is in here, but it was only run by, under the hood really, it's doing nix run hmm, nix packages dot rip grep c r g failed to start, something like that. Yeah, but obviously this is much quicker to type, so that's what it does. Um, this is really useful in all, all sorts of situations, not just when you're on someone else's machine, but when you know, oh, there's this tool that exists and I just want to use it once. I don't want to like install it and then have it sit around on my machine forever. Um, maybe you want to run like PS tree to look at the processes on your system. Boom. Another interesting thing about this is a lot of the time you'll have multiple different derivations that could provide the same binary, right? So if I run like comma Ruby version, it's going to say, well, there's a few of them you could pick from, right? So it gives you a fuzzy search. Let's say I want to run 2.4. So, oh, well, it won't let me. Okay, let's run mm, 2.5. There you go. So that's comma in a nutshell. Play around with it. I think uh, if, you, if you can manage to like build it into your workflow, you'll find it it's surprisingly useful in a surprising number of cases. So let me know what you think. And uh, I'll talk about Nix Locate next time, which is part of the part of what actually powers comma. Have a good one.